Why are razors so expensive? I don't know. Maybe it's because those billion dollar shave companies overload their razors with ridiculous shave tech that you don't really need. Do you really need a razor with a vibrating handle? No, you need a sex toy with a vibrating handle. (laughs) Stop paying out of the nose and make the switch to dollarshaveclub.com. Amazing quality razors and other cool bathroom stuff right to your door for a couple of bucks a month. It really couldn't be any easier than that. You don't have to go out of your house. You don't have to go to CVS or anywhere. It comes to your door. And not that .com isn't easy enough. It's dollar. They don't waste their money on ridiculous shave tech gimmicks. That's one of the ways they can charge a fraction of what the big shave companies charge. And you know what? I think dollarshaveclub.com blades are actually better. Yeah, and signing up couldn't be easier. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com and pick a razor plan. They have three to choose from. Then every month, like clockwork, you'll get a package in the mail with Dollar Shave Club blades. And they've got other great stuff like Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter and One Wipe Charlie's, the peppermint infused butt wipes for men. Because who doesn't like a pepperminty butt? (laughs) I don't know. You must be crazy to not like a (laughs) pepperminty butt. Thanks to dollarshaveclub.com, you'll never forget to buy blades and you'll never get nicked up from squeezing one too many shaves out of that last blade in your pack. And I actually have a cut on my leg right now that I'm looking at. I do too. I'm bleeding and I did not use dollarshaveclub.com. I didn't as well and I have a three line cut right now on my knee from oh, my razor. Which would not happen with dollarshaveclub.com. Join Ask Women and the hundreds of thousands of guys who've upgraded to the smarter way to shave. Shave time, shave money. Join dollarshaveclub.com <laughs> slash askwomen. I don't feel ridiculous saying that because I am proud of who I am. <laughs> shave time, shave money. Join dollarshaveclub.com slash Slash ask women. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash ask women. The following program is a podcast one.com production. Podcast one.com presents the Ask Women Podcast. Uh-huh. A place where two comics and a professional wing girl get together to dissect the female mind. You don't know how I feel. And explain it to men in terms they can actually understand. Booze. Now, here's the lovely ladies of Ask Women. Welcome to the Ask Women Podcast. My name is Marnie, and I'm one of your hosts. This actually is quite difficult. Yeah, it's awkward. Yeah, it is. It is awkward. I always make fun of Kristen because she usually usually intros the show, but she's injured today, horribly injured, so she cannot intro the show. But yes, I am Marnie Kinneris, um, dating expert, relationship coach for men, uh, and nice woman. Um, And then we have Kristen Carney, who is a very talented comedian, super funny, and her mouth is injured, so unable to smile today, but Mm -hmm. still looks beautiful. Thank you. And then uh, we have Mr. Kath- Catherwood. Yeah. That's going to mess up your name. From Loveline, Mike Catherwood. Is- Am I saying that right? Yeah. I feel like I'm screwing it up. I keep screwing no, up the name. No, it's all good. Like Drew Pinsky like I did the other time. Um, but yes, Mike Catherwood. What did you yeah, call Drew? Thought- I thought Drew Pinsky was, was Drew Pinsky. Like His last Drupinski. name was Drew Pinsky. So we had Susan Pinsky on, yeah. and I kept wanting to call her Susan Drew Pinsky. <laughs> Not, <laughs> oh, like that's, that's, awesome. it, that's what I thought yeah. the oh, last name best. was. Yeah, I was like, Dr. Drew Pinsky. Because like Susan my doesn't doctor. get enough of people associating her identity <laughs> right. just for being Dr. Drew's I know. Wife. I know. That's I the go best. Her first I know. Name too. I felt horrible. I tried, to, I tried to steer away from that as much as possible and like have her have her own personality. Did she talk about? Did she talk about fucking Dr. Drew? Yes. Absolutely. Every day. Every day they have sex. I know. Isn't that awesome? How do That's they do like this? The equivalent of her telling us every day that they have sex. Like, I don't know. It seems both is awkward every time. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Every, every day. I every w- day. But how do they have sex every day? I think they make it a point. I mean, I think really? there's there's times when, it, you know, this is it's gotta feel forced. Drew's point of view. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I host a sh- oh, yes. show with Drew. So show. I know Drew very personally uh, in, a, in a very intimate sense. And I also, we, and I know So you have sex with every day, too. Uh, I've tried. Pretty much. I've tried. <laughs> yeah, Susan puts a stop to that. She's, I'm sure she does. <laughs> she's a woman. I'm sure she does. Uh, but he says, you know, that's a, it's, you look at it as another, not only is it sex and you're trying to meet each other's needs sexually, you look at it as a facet of a successful relationship. Relationship. So there's times when maybe he's really tired and he's not up to the task, but he steps his game up and does what he needs to yeah, do. Yeah, that's the thing that there's blew times my mind. When is she is a busy man. And, yeah. yeah and like, there's times, there's times when she maybe is not feeling it, but she steps up her side, and then it just, they meet in the middle, and everything kind of works out from there. So. Yeah. Well, it constantly keeps you connected because I know that there are certain times when my husband and I, not that we get distant from each other, but we get really locked into what we're doing personally sure. on our own. We see each other every day, pretty much, because he, you know, we work from that's home. That's as good as sex for me. <laughs> You're like, that's all that I need. Mm-hmm. 
But without that physical touch there, then it really just becomes a friendship with two people cohabitating. Yeah. And like when we do get those moments where we are cuddling and like he's playing with my hair and looking at my face and kissing me, it, it does like it does reset our relationship again. But so, that yeah. and that shit is really almost as important. It's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. That kind of bullshit's almost that kind of bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> that kind it, of shit. Well, I will. I mean, I a lot of it is bullshit though because a lot of it's like put on. It's forced. Yeah, and it's not always natural. A, a, a large percentage of it, from a man's point of view, is put on that that kind of non sexual interaction, physical non sexual physical interaction. Things like running my fingers through my wife's hair, looking deeply in her eyes for no reason, giving her a kiss in the kitchen. That's just why because, I can't get into romance because it's just so. Awkward. Well, because listen. It's like we're thinking about it. It's never like just in the moment. No, you sometimes know, it, it happens. My point being that although many a times it is, uh, it's a contrived effort from my stance. It's like my wardrobe. It ends up get, the the end result is very successful regardless, and so subsequently that that ball of romance. And inter- intimacy between my wife and I builds, and so the, the ends definitely justify the means. You know, Wait, can even you, the- can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. What you were saying because you were saying it's it's forced, so it's not naturally what you want to do, but you know, many times it is, but many right. times it's not. Many okay. times I'm like, I look at her, I'll be I'll be cooking, or and I'll look over, and she's sitting there, and I'll be like, go over and give her a kiss on the forehead for no reason, and uh, I, I don't, I, I'd rather stay in the kitchen. Then right. walk the 10 yards and do that. For yeah. But I'm like, that'll be really good because she'll really appreciate it and it'll make her feel close to me. Uh, yeah. I, I don't <clears throat> instinctively feel like the desire to do it, but I feel like, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. And sometimes I just do it out of habit. It's just like it pops off. But the times I do it where it's a contrived, thought out thing, in the end, it still leads to us being closer and her looking at me with more intimacy and look, finding me sexier. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. Even if it, even if it, I was faking it till I make it, 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 uh, it all comes out in the same kick-ass, sexy goulash in yeah. the end. You know, so. absolutely. Well, actually, I would say on the flip side because you were saying that men do this, but women do that as well. There's a lot of times where I look at my husband and I'm just like, oh, it would be so nice to just sit here and not do anything, blah blah. I don't yeah. need to engage him. But then in my mind, I think you know what he would, he really needs this right now, or yeah. he would appreciate this, or this would make him feel good, which would ultimately make me feel good, and that's why I motivate myself to do those things. But again. And sometimes it is natural that I want to do those things for him. Yeah. But that is what keeps it alive. Because I think a lot of people get really locked into their laziness and they're like, eh, I'll do it later. And I also get locked into having like a wall up because like if my boyfriend <laughs> yeah. does that to me. I'm like, okay, what bullshit are you doing right now? Yeah. Like, stop. Being, what do you want? Stop. Yeah. Like, let's just get to it. Whatever it is you're trying to get to, let's just like cut out all of like the reading and like let's just look at the pictures. You know you're, what I mean? That's that's probably a byproduct of being a comedian, though. Comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being Every, cynical, like being cynical, cynical of everything. Being super cynical is a really big value uh, of a premium to a comedian, and and that right. I don't want to lose it because yeah. if I lose it, I'm like, what's happening to but, me? And I have to look in the mirror and I'm like, get it together. Which actually, <laughs> for other people, would be they would be thinking I'm saying like fall apart because for me, I'm I function better functioning horribly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But. No, I, I hear you. But, you know. It's a, it's a painful life, though. I will tell you. I've met a lot of a lot of really, really funny people who are miserable and unsuccessful both in life and as comedians because they wouldn't give up on the idea that they have to be a tortured artist. Right. Like, I was just actually talking to Mike Carano here mm-hmm. the other day, and we had, like, a 45-minute long conversation on how we enjoy hating things. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we hate life. So it's like, well, do we want to, like, get rid of that? hating things and then lose who we are or do we want to well isn't there like a way things, to be both or yeah. is it like yeah, he was saying like meditating Swift, like exactly. if she doesn't have a breakup she can't write music well i yeah. i i yeah. i strongly believe that the 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 notion in in a buddhist the buddhist idea is that suffering is developed all human suffering is developed from clinging to things that aren't that we unnecessarily cling to they're, yeah. they're, they're absolutely frivolous and useless but we cling to them uh you you cling to the idea of your kid being who you want your kid to be as opposed to who they really are yeah. you cling to how you looked at age 25 as opposed and and <laughs> go crazy with plastic surgery or what diets as opposed to just growing old gracefully and if you cling to the idea that i'm a i'm a tortured person and i am angry and that's what makes me me you're going to go through this cycle of really Really having the dissonance between who your personality is and enjoying life. Because whether or not you can crank out one or two extra jokes 
because you hate the person driving a Prius in front of you as opposed to not giving a fuck of what kind of car people drive uh, is really not worth it when you r- think about the fact that we probably got about seven years here. Not, right. you know, not... Right. Not 700. Is it all really worth it? it, it because a, a creative person, in my opinion, a creative person's a creative person's a creative person, whether you're happy or sad. And yeah. it's all kind of, I mean, because I even got into using drugs, I think. I mean, I was a, an addict no matter what, but I got into it early on because all the guys I always looked up to were dead at 27 from heroin overdoses and, and drinking themselves to death. I thought yeah. it was going to be, you know, I thought it was going to be this like Kerouac type you know dylan thomas type figure and it's all bullshit i mean that they, all, aside, so you thought you were gonna die at 27 well or no for? it was like this kick-ass you know kind of punk rock prophecy but in so actuality like yeah it on. had nothing to do with whether or not i right. would pursue any certain goals creatively it was just almost trying to fill some you know wear some weird costume yeah well actually this is an interesting segue and you know, i'm going to take it back to dating and relationships and like to help the people who are listening on the show but um before i do bring that up i want to talk about our guest on the show today mm-hmm. who actually is a very good friend of mine mm-hmm. uh his name is bruce silverman i think he's in his 60s maybe early 70s i don't know how old he is he looks like he's in his 30s he does he looks, mm-hmm. he's a good looking guy but okay. i met him probably nine years ago when i i was working in the finance industry Mm -hmm. and I wanted to get into advertising and I had created this networking event called Young in Business Uh, when he's not young in business but he's in business and he was there with somebody else and I he I talked to him and he told me that he used to be second in command at Ogilvy when Ogilvy was huge for advertising he came up with the expression American Express don't leave home without it some amazing ad campaigns never heard it never heard of it yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) not popular at all but uh, I had talked to him and I said, I really want to get into advertising. I have this business where I'm a wing girl, but you know, I have to stay in the country and have a, a real job and get a green card. How I need to have a job and I want to be in advertising. He said, Okay, I am in I'm in advertising. I can help you do that, but it's gonna take you actually contacting me and following up. And I looked at him and said, Okay, do people not usually follow up when you make an offer like that? And he said, You'd be surprised. He gave me his card and he said, We'll see if I ever hear from you. And for me, I was like, how, how do people yeah. not follow up with that? And I followed up with him and then I've, I've known him since then we he introduced me to some people i ended up getting my own job in advertising and staying in the country legally for a little bit um but I've known him for a really long time. We probably check in with each other every once in a while. But he wrote this book that's about getting shit for free, yeah. about being a Jew who complains and gets, <laughs> gets shit for free. And I and he's really a charming, wonderful man and knows how to have great conversations. I was about to say, the guy with the last name is Silverman writing uh, yeah. how, how to get, <laughs> how stuff, to get for stuff for free. free. Not really doing a lot for the old stereotypes yeah, right. there. Right. Yeah. He's feeding into it and he's getting shit for free. Yeah, so it's totally him. great. I forgot what his book is called, but he's going to come onto the show. That was a long intro. Um, but now I want so he's back. doing like a disservice to his advertising industry. It's like he worked <laughs> so much. hard at trying to get people to, to buy get people shit. To buy and now he's getting it for free. Because <laughs> now he knows the ins and outs of it, the right? Irony. He knows how to work the system. But the segue that I was going to say was was similar to what, Mike, you and I were talking about before we started. We were starting this podcast. But you were talking about how um, when you do change your mindset and you kind of let all the shit go away mm-hmm. and you're not bothered by stupid stuff that bothered you in the past. It opens you up so that you can be more free and opportunity can come your way. And I yeah. think that's a really good thing to talk about for this chapter, today's chapter in the man's playbook. Hey, bar. <laughs> Because a lot of guys get really wrapped inside or tra- trapped. Why can't I not speak today? Get really trapped in their heads, mm-hmm. thinking about the rejection, thinking about what possibly can happen to them if they put themselves out there, thinking about the, the fact that they're a seven and that girl's a nine, so they can't approach her. And I think that success for a lot of men when interacting with women, especially, forget about the other interactions in the world, but sure. with women, once they sort of let go of all of that shit, that's when they can really start to see success because they don't care anymore. And you, you got to embrace, you got of really embrace the struggle of life so many people live in such an and especially men i young guys i talk to nowadays uh they call up love line or i meet them in my personal life and and i i know these kids like they're they're 20 21 and they say i want to do a b and c and they never follow through with any of it for the same reason that they never approach girls it's because they're so scared yeah and and i am certainly not the smartest guy out there and I am by no means a tough guy but I will 
toot my own horn in that in in every kind of crossroads I've come to and in every avenue in life I definitely got a pair of balls it's like if I if I'm gonna do this I might as well give it a shot what's the worst that can happen well like you just said we're not here for 700 years we're here for seven and so when you kind of put that in per, into perspective you all of a sudden realize that the guy who's wearing the suit that's supposed to intimidate you out of getting this job is really just an idiot like everybody else mm-hmm. and so it when you put a cap on how long we're here it starts to limit how scared you are yeah well you would think it would for most it people, does it, it helps doesn't. me for stand-up when really? i look at other people and i think oh my god they're so good they're so amazing and then all of a sudden i realize they're nobody also and they're trying to do exactly what it is i'm trying to do i s- just instantly feel more self-confident i was mm-hmm. i was at a point in my career where early on where i did feel not only intimidated but jealous or envious of other guys who were getting a huge radio contract or had their own radio show or whatever it may be and and I, I went through certain things in my life that were totally unrelated to uh, my my professional life. You go through real crisis. R- think about like you people sit around and they get so worried about their job interview the next day or the pe- potentially losing their job. It's a waste of time. Anything that's really you, that, anything that you can really worry about in life, and I and I know this to be true. You can mark this down in the book of life. Anything that you really have to worry about in life, you don't have time to worry about. It'll wake you up at two a.m. or come and sideswipe you out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. Finding out your mom has cancer finding out you you your 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 baby didn't survive the delivery yeah. real shit that you deal with you know uh you, you know all that kind of thing um that you don't sit and worry about that you don't rum it you know walk back and forth and 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 have this anxiety once you go through a, a couple occasions like that you kind of lose sight of all the other like bullshit, bullshit that you once worried about mm-hmm. and when you can be liberated that way uh, it is very, it's very nice. I often see, like, look at it in how I interact with women. I was not very good with women at, as far as my interaction with them. I yeah. was that guy who would see four or five signs that I could approach a girl, have people unrelated to it approach me and be like, dude, just go do it. She's into you. Clearly she's giving, she's literally I, holding a sign with your <laughs> name on it. Yes. <laughs> and, and I couldn't do it. I was so scared of it. And after getting rejected a lot in my professional life, after going through divorce, after getting clean and sober, after uh, having people kill, you know, commit suicide, and then right. in my life, and then uh, then getting married again, all the pressure in dealing with women was completely removed because I'm married and I have no aspiration to cheat. Right, exactly. So when I see a pretty girl, now it's just a, a, another human being on the earth who happens to be uh, appealing to my eyeballs. So I go up <laughs> and I just act completely like myself with zero uh, pretensions, with zero kind of ideas. So how do we tell guys to do this, like to be that guy, well, but without the marriage and without yeah. the death and the addiction and all of the other things that you This is in? the the best advice I can give guys about mm-hmm. doing it. You're going to go to any social situation uh, that you may be in, and you're going to see that girl that you're attracted to. By all accounts, she's single. She doesn't have a wedding ring. You don't know her, but what's the chance, you know, what's the, the, the downside to talking to her? But you're going to talk yourself out of it in your mind because you're scared. You're right. scared. You just don't have the balls to do it. And I'm not talking, I'm not saying that in a pejorative manner. I was that guy many a times. I watched this documentary about uh, Marines in this particularly dangerous uh, part of Afghanistan. It was known to be a the, valley. The entire country? Yes. Uh, yeah. Particularly yes. It was all of dangerous. Yeah. But this, this certain valley uh, in, in Afghanistan, which is, like Santa you said, Mano which valley. is truly a, a, a dangerous place in, in total. There's a certain <laughs> valley w- w- which is almost suicide going in because of how the angles uh, that uh, Afghani insurgents and, and different um, terrorist groups, the, the angles that they had and uh, lines of sight oh, wow. and the different uh, booby traps that they had put in the There's sand. There's a minimal chance you're getting out of life. But they have to go through this valley to get to certain other parts of the country. And they're talking to these Marines, some of them like 19. You know, and I'm watching this as a 34 year old man. Uh, I'm looking, and they're like, "Well, um, yeah, I'm scared, but you got to do what you got to do." I, I didn't come here to to push out now, and I and and I'm listening to these guys talk, and I'm looking at the fear in their eyes, and they and they go through it, and at the end of this documentary, some of those kids didn't make it, some of them did. This is horrifying, and I, it is. I sit and I think about that, and I think about 19 year old Mike 
in a bar being scared to talk to another human right. being? Yeah, right. Absolutely. What's well, the there's... absolute worst <laughs> potential? Right. The absolute exactly. fucking disaster is she's You're like, going to fall into like a good booby trap yeah. there. Yeah. The, yeah, the, exactly. the absolute, I mean, worst case scenario is she says, uh, no. she says, no, I'm not interested. I have a boyfriend. Not I step on an IED and, and die. die. Yet I'm scared to do this small. Yeah. People are so, so scared of human interaction, yeah. and you just gotta relook but, but, at well, it and, and stay, take a step back and be like, you know what? I'm not going into this valley in Afghanistan. I'm gonna go talk to a girl. Yeah, but there's actually something interesting that you said there. Okay, so so they're soldiers. Soldiers go through training, mm-hmm. right? So that training prepares you. So I think a lot of the people who look at okay, there's that guy who goes up to girls and he approaches her and she's totally into him. They're having so much fun. They're flirting. They're laughing. He's so successful. They don't acknowledge the amount of years that they possibly practiced, possibly got rejected, possibly fell flat on their face. Maybe they didn't have that situation, that guy over there who's super successful, but most likely at some point in their life, they put themselves out there to a woman and she said no. They just look at the huge success that this guy is able to chat up a woman and be super successful. So I think for a lot of guys, and the guys who are listening to this show, they, they need to acknowledge that practice is the essential piece that makes you that expert, that makes sure. you that Marine or that soldier that can walk through the valley of death and say, fuck that, I'm scared, but I'm going to do it anyway because potentially it could be something absolutely amazing rather than potentially I could fall flat on my face and be rejected. I want, I want to say too, Mike, I, I think the other thing with what you're saying is there's a general standing behind those infantrymen saying, go out there and do it now. If Every guy here in the states had somebody behind them that they it was an authority yeah, figure like that mob. forced so them to go. This is talk a huge advertisement woman. for me, is what we're yeah. saying. They should all go to my site and buy exactly. my product. You're the general. Done. Go, I'm the general. Make go it and make them do it, regardless of how they feel about it. I don't know. I mean, I think that it would certainly help, but that's not always the case. I definitely had attractive women that were either married or bo- girlfriends of my fr- male friends around me saying, "Oh, she's my friend. We've talked about you before." She likes you. She thinks you're cute. You should go talk to her. And I still wouldn't do it. Um, but you didn't have the practice. You didn't have like the, right. the week of training. Listen. Before. As I'm trying to pump myself best, up. I'm like, just stop <laughs> just taking away from me. The <laughs> best fighters are always on the mats. Yeah. The best swimmers are always in the pool. That, that's that, There's no doubt about it. And sometimes your training is going to be great. Sometimes your training is going to suck. But more pe- the more you train, the better things are right. going to go like for you. Right. Like that book, yeah. Outliers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, great book. the Malcolm Gladwell book. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, you kind of realize that it does take 10,000 hours to get good at anything Mm -hmm. and you can talk yourself out of it and go oh my god I'll never get the 10,000 hours in or you can just get off your butt and actually start getting the 10,000 hours Yeah, start getting one hour under your belt and then slowly it becomes achievable I think this is fantastic I'm not saying like getting talking to girls you need 10,000 hours it might not hurt though I mean I'm certainly not at, at, at an expert level but I'm so much more in tune with the feminine idea, the the entire feminine essence from talking to women more. And the more and more that I do it, I, well, I spent 30 years not really talking to girls. And that included a marriage and it really? included being married uh, included being raised in a household of almost exclusively women. My dad traveled greatly. I'm probably 200 some days out of the year. My entire life. So I was with my mom and my sister, and my mom has six sisters, and they were there in the house all the time. Excuse me, five sisters, six total. And 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 I, I was almost, and I made it a point not to ever fucking interact with them as much as possible. Really? Yeah. Why? And because was that was, thing? it felt very comfortable from you know a guy's point of view. It was. It, it felt see, uncomfortable. It felt very comfortable, comfortable. to not engage because oh, they sorry. definitely speak a different language. I think you were. Going to mm-hmm. touch on that. The, the enmeshment of, of, of a female's way of communicating and a man's mm-hmm. is totally different. And sometimes my wife just wants to talk to me, and that makes no fucking sense. Right. I don't understand. She's like, I'll be like, well, uh, uh, all right, you said that already. Can we get to the. She's like, I'm not a fucking caller on your radio show. Don't rush right, me. Right, exactly. So I just need I to get this off my minutes. chest. Exactly. I need to get this off my chest. And to my I, boyfriend, I say, I'm not a Mexican in your fields. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, 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 he an works orange field driver? He yeah. works construction. Okay. <laughs> Where's that going from? I like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, but so, that uh, next the next episode that we have together, I definitely want to talk because I was going to bring it up today. But conversation threading, that's something I definitely want to talk about. Right. But one thing I do want to bring up is like, you know, the movie Groundhog Day yeah. where he gets to live a day over and over and over. That's practice. Yeah. He gets and to torture. have an interaction with Andy McDowell. McDowell? Is that her name? Sure. Andy McDow- whatever the hell her name Pugsatani is. Punxsutawney Phil. 
P- exactly. That's her name. Pugsatani Phil. But he gets to interact with her every single day, mess up, and go back and redo it and sure. tweak something a little bit differently so that it gets him a higher level of success. So he gets to that point where she says yes for a date. Then he screws up five more times and then gets a yes once it's past the date to go on the next date or to make out whatever it is. So practice is essential e- for these guys. For Not for these guys. I don't want to say that. For, for, for people who are listening, even for me, like and even for all of us who are in the room right now, practice is the essential piece to becoming an expert, a master. Watch the Olympics. That, that Those people did not just suddenly put on a pair of skis and become masters right away. They have hours and hours and hours under their belt of learning that skill set, learning that sport, figuring out the ins and outs of what they can do, what they can't do. And it's the same thing for the skill set of interacting with women, picking up women, right. approaching women, having sex with women, whatever it is. And let me tell you, this is true, and I, I would hope that both of you agree. If you don't, please let me tell me if I'm co- no, we'll talking out of bullshit. Being a good-looking dude, it gives you a little margin. You know, I mean, it don't get me wrong. It gives you a door for sure, but, but you can fall on your face but really quickly. women really appreciate a good personality, a sense of humor. It, you Absolutely. don't have to be fucking uh, uh, underwear model to be successful with girls. It is different. Women, I, I will, I will shoot down men here. We are shallow. Like, yeah. yes. really, you could be the greatest, most uh, like uh, uh, engaging chick in the world. But if you're not hot, most guys don't want to pay yeah, attention exactly. to you. Like that really is unfortunately true. Ninety percent of women will say, and I was going to say ninety five percent before, but I changed it. But ninety percent of women will say they're more into personality than they are into looks. I know yeah. I am. Me, me too. It makes it, it, it listen, and and that that is the biggest benefit that men have going for them is that a lot of times guys look from afar and they'd be like, well, he's so han- he's six foot three and has six pack abs and beautiful. I don't stand a chance again. No, you do. You totally you do because yeah. he's probably a bag of shit. You've actually got questions may have a, yeah. from people like that. They describe themselves. They're like, I'm really handsome. I'm tall. I have abs. I'm amazing, but I can't. But I can't with girls. Women. Because you write emails where you describe yourself exactly. as tall with abs and, and you exactly. don't have exactly. something better to do with your fucking life. Right. You bag of shit. And there were probably misspellings in it too. Yes. I would assume. That's there what, you know, that, I edited that it. That gets you. I mean, don't get me wrong. It definitely g- draws your attention. You walk into a restaurant. Chicks yeah. will be like, whoa, look at that guy. Right. But that doesn't matter. That, that matters nothing it's look i i uh when i go to to fight or uh, uh at the mma gym i train with guys some guys walk in looking like mr america big buff muscular dudes and 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 they look the part they look like a comic book character yeah all that doesn't amount to a hill of beans when a 135 guy 135 pound guy with a pot belly who's been training since he was 10 years old chokes him the fuck out yeah. because he has the actual skills that matter exactly. and the same thing goes to you could be a marcus schenkenberg looking dude i'm really dating myself because wasn't he like <laughs> yeah, a handsome like, model in like 1995 who is that guy? he was like a big model a long time ago uh you could be like the most beautiful guy in the world it doesn't really matter if you talk if you walk up to a lady and you you can't engage in conversation it yeah. doesn't i mean there's a there's a small window of girls yes, who I've, just want to it said, depends on what a girl's looking for yeah. as well during that time period but i completely agree with you i've always said that honestly i'm not at all attracted to brad pitt he's like the picture he's like and i and this is i've, I've said this before he's pretty he's like the golden retriever of men where yeah of course he's good looking but they're they're boring i've seen yeah. them like way too many times and they're not interesting i want the weird scrub Scruffy dog that has like a, that looks like an old man because it's like offers something different rather than this almost like like you said comic book yeah. kind of cutout. Like I'd always I would literally go for George Costanza over Brad Pitt any day, and people would call me on that and say bullshit. But it's not. No, it's actually very it's true. true. I very believe true. that you would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the home the home run is a is a is like a George Clooney or someone like that who is handsome. Angry intelligent, very seem to be philanthropic. I'm playing with jokes on you. Practical jokes. How do you, how can you dislike a man? And he's like, like in like the cool kids club, like him and and Brad Pitt. It's like okay, we get it. You guys are like your the king of the Elks club in the small. <laughs> well, club. I mean, it makes for a good example. You're probably right. I mean, yeah. they're probably very. Uh, I get very no, specific. But I I mean, there's there there is guys who are incredibly right, handsome right. who are philanthropic and and generous right. and caring and, yes. and smart. You know, and right. that's the home run. That's what you. I mean, I think all women would love. But yes. but George Costanza does rank high than a guy a guy who looks like Brad Pitt and doesn't have much to offer. Right, right. And another thing that you 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 touched on something is that a lot of I think that the the idea of what a man is or even masculine energy as a whole is so misguided now. And it, and I I say well, it's this not misguided. It's not guided it's at all right now. I say this as a man who suffered from it is that you think that the idea of being masculine 
uh, is being macho, and the right. two are far apart. Um, and you don't really realize it's a very it, because then you run into the into the territory where you're actually not giving a woman what she needs from a man because you're wasting so much energy a- engaging in these other things that you think she being needs. Being macho yeah. is the same equivalent. So guys say to women, you know all that time that you spend like working on your nails and your hair, like we don't notice. Either we think you're hot or you're ugly. Mm-hmm. That that's the equivalent for us for dudes is when they're macho. Women don't care if you're macho. It's kind of like you can put all the time and energy into being macho the way that like some horrible personality woman put a million hours into her hair. It, it doesn't make a difference. Like it, we're not going to like you, right? Regardless, right? It's not. It's I don't not, know if I explained that correctly. No, you but. did. It's just it's not the thing that's going to be the tipping point for us, right? It'll like, be the that's tipping why point I to like make you. someone run away. You put yourself together, you're, or because you're super macho. I'm going to interrupt because we have to get to our our guest, Bruce Silverman. But I knew we were going to have a good conversation with yes. you. Yes. Um, but again, but Mike, again, Mike is on Love Line. Just give a little plug for yourself and just say who you are because I didn't really properly introduce uh, you. Yeah, a little plug for myself. Yeah. You know, I just got an awesome butt plug that has a ponytail. It has a really a horsey ponytail. So you put it in your butt, it looks like you have a horse tail. That's funny. Yeah. You know, I thought. Literally, I thought butt plugs were for gay men who had too much butt sex until yeah. like two months ago. To say stop? Is that like to stop them from having sex? No, no it's, it's to it's plug like, up any sort of. I thought, always no. thought it was to plug up their, their no, it's bowels. A sexual, no, it's, it's, it's like for thing. more. Pleasure. I know, I didn't know that. And the only reason I found out was because my mom saw um, Jennifer Lawrence talking about butt plugs on like The Tonight Show or something. What? My mom goes, What is a butt plug? And I was like, Mom, ugh, everyone knows it's for gay men who've had too yeah. much butt sex. And then she I thought told, it was like a grommet to prevent leakage. That's she, what I thought. Yeah. So that's what she still thinks it is. It's, because then I asked well, my I asked my boyfriend her. and he was like, What you don't know what a butt plug is? I'm very I'm very innocent. Listen. Everybody. Get the graduating set that starts off really. For these ladies out there, I'm sure you have <laughs> ladies in your uh, and and, yes, and males who, who, who have a girlfriend sex. or a, 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 a wife that they're trying to get into anal sex. Yes, they're, they Baby sell steps. these like they're almost like Russian nesting dolls, and or they're graduating <laughs> butt plugs, and they start off really small. One's like a like a 22 bullet, oh my God. and then the end one is like a like a like a, a cucumber. Oh and then you get really? once you get you work your way up once you get to the cucumber then you're ready for the pee pee. Well, that is a <laughs> that's a good final note for us because okay. a lot of guys think that you can just like ram it in right away yeah. for anal sex and no, transfer you can. over from like you know practicing and being a really good man to anal sex. But you have to you have to work the anus a little bit. Well, you have to stretch. You do. You, you can't can just ram shove it in. It in. I mean, by work suck. it we it's mean make it hurt. It's probably pleasurable. It if you want her to continue doing this, then exactly what you're saying. You have to work your way around the anus and stretch it out. Anyway, coming up next on Around the and Away from the podcast. Anus. I want to say real quickly, yeah. I'm very sorry I drank all your water. I okay. you have numerous you guests three... and I drank numerous bottles. Hey, that's all right. We'll go get you three more bottles. Okay. You can well, use we have Bruce plugs. Silverman coming up next, who is going to teach us how to get shit for free and just uh, charm us with his charming self. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Marnie from the Ask Women Podcast. Buying a car is a not-so-fun experience for most people, and it doesn't have to be. At TrueCar.com, they'll help you get rid of the fear that you may overpay. You know when you'll get a fair price because they show you what others paid for the car you're looking for. TrueCar.com analyzes what people are paying for their cars in their market and shares it with consumers so that they never have to overpay. Over 40,000 cars were sold by TrueCar certified dealers just last month. Users see an average savings of $3,046 off every MSRP. True Car certified dealers go through a certification process and you work directly with a True Car representative that will honor your savings. True Car certified dealers believe that truth and transparency are essentials to a better buying experience. First, go to TrueCar.com and find out what others pay for the same vehicle in your market and around the country. Second, register at TrueCar.com to see upfront pricing information and lock in your savings certificate. And the third step is simple. Just print out your certificate and take it to the True Car certified dealer for a better hassle-free buying experience. True Car has the most comprehensive new car pricing information available and a certified network of dealers that offers a hassle-free car buying experience and negotiation-free guaranteed savings. Support the Ask Women podcast and shop at truecar.com. This part of the show is brought to you by Stamps.com, a company you should be using right now. Use the promo code PATRICK for this special offer. It's a no-risk trial plus a $110 bonus offer, which includes a digital scale and up to $55 free 
postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Patrick. So, you guys, before we get to anything else, I want to talk to you about the fact that I just ordered flowers on ProFlowers.com. I have made the mistakes in the past because my grandmother lives in Utah. I clearly do not, thank God. And, like, I've ordered them maybe, like, the day before, and I never get really what I want. This is the time. If someone lives far away from you, this is the way in to their heart. I always order my grandma uh, flowers every year. This year I got roses on Pro Flowers. They were super affordable for roses because roses are always really expensive. I got a striped vase. It was like twenty nine ninety nine and like five dollars for the vase. If you buy roses anywhere, they're always way more expensive than that. And I also feel really awesome about what I did because she will get her flowers. I look really good. My brother and sister are going to look really bad. So I suggest doing that because that's definitely a way to get a gift for somebody that you can't really be next to. Do what I did. Go to proflowers.com and there's a little microphone up in the top. Click that and then type in ask and then it will bring you and say like hey ask women listener and then you'll get to feel really proud while you're shopping go to their website and do that the little microphone must do it soon because the order expires midnight on friday so do your shopping go to proflowers.com look for the little microphone button at the top right hand side of the page and then click that and all you have to do is type in ask it's not like you do a dash ask anything code they just literally say like what's your password ask and you can also do it by calling 1-800-PRO-FLOWERS and then mention ask to them on the phone hey guys it's marty buying it you're listening to the ask women podcast a podcast one presentation whatever hey guys welcome back to the ask women podcast uh i'm we're here with uh bruce silverman who is an amazing jewish man because he's <laughs> continuing the plight a to get things jewish for free man. a moist jewish man that's that's a long story i would go as far to say the greatest the greatest the greatest, since, the greatest since jew since in Jesus. history my god since, yeah. uh, look let's or since you know, we, we can give a little that's since, good he was from brooklyn i'm yeah. from brooklyn <laughs> you know he's in the You'll skinny book yeah, is he? You know what the skinny book is? No. I'm right. the most goy guy ever. No, the skinny <laughs> book is famous Jewish sports heroes. Oh. <laughs> so it's like one page A pamphlet. long. <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> and I played basketball at the same school that Sandy played basketball. And he was a really good basketball player. He got a scholarship to University of Cincinnati. And the baseball coach spotted him and said, can you throw with your left hand. <laughs> with this, <laughs> yeah. Can you throw money into a bank? Right. Like, yes, I can, <laughs> sir. But uh, Bruce wrote How to Complain for Fun and Profit, which is amazing because I have the first part of this book down, which is the complain part, but I don't have the fun and profit because I'm definitely not having fun and I'm definitely broke. So <laughs> yeah. we do need to chit chat. But um, before we do, I just want to tell you guys if you guys are buying books like mm-hmm. How to Complain for Fun and Profit, do it on our Amazon page, yeah. which yes. is at wingrowmethod.com slash Amazon. So yes. do it. Do it, do it. Perfect. Do, it. do you guys okay. have the, uh, not to take away yeah. sidetrack, you guys have the click through though? I yeah, find we do that have it's, the click through. It's a lot yeah. easier to just tell people to bookmark that so that before yeah. they ever go to. Yeah. So. You can also go to podcastone.com and go to the Ask Women page and then click our Amazon banner. Just literally hit no, star or it. bookmark. If you do Wingrow Method of No, I know, but I'm just Amazon. saying because that. And then bookmark that yeah. page. Because actually, page. yeah, I won't get into it. But if, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but uh, so I am awkwardly not smiling today. I never really smile. Like I said, I'm not having fun ever. But um, right. I did injure my gu- my gums. Um, and uh-huh. it's it's horrible looking. <laughs> and it's purple. And I look like I have um, gingivitis hey, it doesn't, or something. Honestly, it, doesn't it doesn't look, look horrible. Doesn't look it looks horrible because you, you have see stiff it. mouth. Yeah. You, it, it, what looks yeah, more well, horrible like, is that you're talking like Paul Abdul. Right. Yeah, I'm exactly. Just, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's really uncomfortable. But I honestly... I. I'm a huge Dorito fan, and this is actually what I've been running into lately is I shove Doritos in my mouth, and I get the slits on the side of my mouth kind of like it's almost like the paper cut of, of Doritos or of chips, you yes. know? Yeah. And so anyway, I just, I mean, in, in a different way, I cut myself, but on my, I basically bit into it, and it went up under my gum I've on the underside, and then it's horrible. on the front, now it's all red and purple. Well, then but. Bruce is going to teach you how to get shit for that for free. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, the, the reason that I wanted to have you on this show, I was explaining in the, in the first half. Yes, exactly. Um, but I was explaining how we met, how you used to work with Ogilvy, how you created fin, uh, very famous campaigns like American Express, Don't Leave Home Without It. But the one thing that I've I've known about you since I've met you is that you are a captivating storyteller. Even when my husband met you, he's like, I want to go hang out with that guy again and just listen to him talk and tell stories. But you're looking at me like I'm a crazy person but you, now. But, but we never did it again. I know. And you guys paid for the breakfast. I know. 
Fine, so you so got to do it for again. Free. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You tell a few stories, and that's how you get shit for free. But so I, I the, our show is for men and for women uh, who are looking to attract the opposite sex, same sex, but overall to have more confidence to do what they want uh, in their dating, love lives, and romantic lives. And so conversation comes up a lot. A lot of guys don't know how to talk to women, what to talk to women about, and I thought, who better to talk about that conversation than you? Because even though you may not know that you're a natural natural charmer you are my, my ex-wife um used to say i talk too much so really? maybe maybe <laughs> maybe i was overly charming exactly well maybe it works my for current the beginning wife, stages my current wife thinks i'm great <laughs> <laughs> well what what about you when you think about i don't know if it's, it's hard because you're married now but to remember you know when you were interacting with women what did you talk to them about and what skills for conversation do you think that you have now that help people become attracted to you um I, I've always believed that the, the best way to be a good conversationalist is to start by being a good listener. Yeah. Um, and the way you become a good listener is to be able to ask good questions, to elicit conversation. Yeah. Because once you get conversation going, you can find common ground. Right. And, uh, you know, not everybody has a gazillion stories to tell about their life or anything. First of all, you have to be old enough to have a lot of stories. Right. You know, what are you going to tell when you're 19 years old? You know, well, I spoke the joke. Uh, Big yeah. deal. Well, you could be a liar. <laughs> you could be a liar. Yeah, exactly. Just you cool make up shit. Yeah. You could be a liar. Yeah, I don't advocate that. <laughs> um, I think that, that, that usually bites you in the ass. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you, you know, ask kind of normal questions. Um, if you meet somebody and, you know, you say, hey, what do you do? Uh, you know, sometimes you know, but sometimes you don't. And then you say, what's it like? Do you like it? How'd you get there? See, these are the interesting questions, though. The, and the, even the way that you're saying them looks, you look actually interested. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm always interested. Whether you're not or I, No, but you see, I think, I think you should be. I, yeah. I think that, um, it, I think it has to do with genuineness. Right. Uh, uh, you know, I, I worked in advertising for almost 40 years. And one of the tricks I learned in that business was you have to walk in the consumer's shoes because um, it isn't what the advertiser wants to say about his product that works. That doesn't work. What matters is what, what does the consumer want to hear? So you need to figure out what the consumer wants to hear. And Absolutely. you can look at all the research and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's almost common sense. And you just talk to people. So what I did for years and years was I would go to shopping malls and um, I would have a sign said conducting survey. And you'd be amazed how many people want to express their opinion yeah. about what Well, I'm not was. surprised. I've seen the internet. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, that's right. Well, this is before the internet. So, you know, you just talk to people and you kind of find out what makes them tick. Well, you don't have to put up a sign. You don't have to be in advertising, but it's really simple. You got to care about who you're talking to. Yeah. And if you find you can't care, move on. Right. right. Just move on did you, because that's never going to work. Did right. you find a difference between men and women um, in the yeah, conversation? Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, men tend to be more closed in and women tend to open up more. But I also found that men, if prodded a little bit, um, they're just waiting. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they, they need to they, they need to feel safe about the conversation. You know, men, we, we still live in a society where men, you know, are kind of encouraged to be somewhat macho. We were talking about that before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so they, they don't want to reveal their inner thoughts, except sometimes they do. And sometimes, you know, what are the inner thoughts about? You know, did you like? that movie did you right. like that that music um you know what do you do in your spare time do you like your job you know if you, you scratch most guys try frankly and you say do you like your jobs you know 75 percent of the time they're gonna deep down they hate it they hate it because they feel stuck right and so you know like what can you do to say to somebody it could be better well, maybe maybe they need some encouragement to reinvent themselves or to move on. You know, moving on is hard for most people. You know, we, we live in a society where I think common wisdom says, oh, you know, you can split up easily. You can change jobs easily. You can change houses easily. You can change cities easily. That's crap. It isn't true. Right. It's hard to do. It's hard to give up what you have. Absolutely. Because that's the safe zone. So. It feels comfortable. Exactly. Escaping yeah. comfort for adult human beings is incredibly difficult, no matter how courageous you are. It Absolutely. Just... Yeah, Absolutely. I, I, I always, I'm always amazed when I, I met a woman a couple of weeks ago. My wife and I were on vacation in Vietnam and Cambodia. We, we 
sailed. Playing with snakes. Yeah. We yeah. playing with snakes. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing with this giant Same python. Um, we did a lot Kristen of really interesting night, things. But, but I, we <laughs> yeah. met a woman. Right on my ass. <laughs> met a woman the orange all over named my mouth. Sylvia. And Sylvia. In we, Vietnam? We were, we were in Vietnam. We were on the Mekong River. It's like my we manicurist. We were in a tiny little town. And we met a woman named Sylvia who is from Slovenia. <laughs> I had to go back later, look on my iPad, go online, because I didn't know where Slovenia was. And I you know, just said, wow, where is that country? I've heard of Slovakia. Right, yeah. So it's below Slovakia. So here's this woman living in an unnamed little village on the Mekong River where she's working with the local people there to develop their silk weaving business to ship back to Europe. Oh, wow. So... You know, we ended up having coffee and a very interesting woman. A lot of, and I said, how did you do this? She said, well, you know, I just thought it would be interesting. And I said, a lot of courage. She said, yeah. I said, so what's next? She said, well, in two weeks I get to go see my boyfriend. And I figure she's going back to Slovenia. No, he lives in Nashville. What? <laughs> yeah, he's a rocker. <laughs> and I said to myself, you know, this, this is woman's a, really a superhero this is a gutsy in disguise. Woman. Yeah. This is a gutsy woman. And if I was single, and she happened to be gorgeous, um, if I was single, I would chase that woman from one end of the world to the other. Because, you know, she's one thing she's not. She's not boring. Right. Not at all. Right. It doesn't hurt to be gorgeous. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I want to go back to something you were talking about before. Um, and you were saying being interested in what people have to say and listening to them. So for the guys, and, and I have a really hard time doing it on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I, I love what you're saying. Yeah. No, but so so the questions that you were asking were great, like uh, secondary and secondary questions to ask, follow up questions to ask. And I think a lot of people have difficult um, difficulty with transitioning past the question phase. Can you possibly give an example of like a, a converse like of, of ways that you could open up the conversation I know that's hard to say we can even do a mock conversation together because a lot of guys will will say okay I've got a question in my mind I'm gonna ask her this question but they don't usually prepare anything else they sort of leave the conversation up to the girl afterwards for her to take the lead and they fall flat on their face and they get nervous and then usually eject themselves from the, the situation so how do people continue and keep the conversation going uh, I guess it really goes back to that idea of listening um, when we met the very first time, we were at some event. I don't even remember what the event was. It was my was. Young in Business event. Okay. So we're at this event, and we end up standing next to each other holding glasses of wine. And you turned to me and said, who are you? What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So I answered. And then I said, and who are you? What do you do? Now, I hear this thing about a wing girl, and I go, what? <laughs> um, but I was really curious. Now, if somebody said to me, what do you do? If I said, what do you do? And they said, I'm a nurse. And I'd say, where? Isn't that hard? You work 12 hours a day. Now, I know just enough. That's. I think I just told you everything I know about nurses. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that woman, whoever it is, is highly likely to talk to me about what it's like to work 12 hours a day, what it's like to work in an ER or to work in a neonatal lab or to work with old people. Right. And I'm going to listen and I'm going to relate because I know people who had babies, including the various wives I've had. Right. Um, the uh, I know old people because I'm rapidly getting to be one of them, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, et cetera. So all you do is you just reach into yourself. I, I don't really think it's hard. I really don't. Um, I think it's just simply overcoming the idea that you might sound stupid. One thing Absolutely. I have learned in all of my life, it's okay to sound stupid from time to time. Everybody does it. I certainly do it. I, I mean, I have done You've done it four times on this show. Remarkably <laughs> stupid things. Um, but that's okay. And I've had women roll their eyes at some of the things I've said. And I said, gosh, I wish I didn't say that. And I finally learned to say, I wish I didn't say that aloud. You say it out loud? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, it, it creates a laugh. And, and it that shows the other person that you're comfortable with yourself. Exactly. And it, it puts them at ease with you. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for as a man you you touched on the idea of what you want to be as a man you, you, the idea of masculinity and, and machismo and that doesn't usually jive with exposing vulnerability but there's a lot of value in that and i think especially when talking to a female absolutely um, because so many guys pretend to put put up this you know this carefully crafted veneer of infallibility yeah but exposing vulnerability oftentimes you know i'm not saying it's you've got to write a, a, an emo song every time you talk to her, but, <laughs> right but please but, don't yeah saying like well, well she didn't say that is, well i have this exercise of, yeah. that i give to the guys who sign up for my newsletters and it's called it's called announcing the elephant it's literally just saying what's tr what's being trapped inside of your head because 
the moment that you start fixating on, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you just, you separate from that person. So you're out of the conversation completely. You're disconnecting because you're trapped in the shoulda, coulda, woulda, and it messes up your connection and conversation. So if you literally say it out loud, like, you know, I'm nervous talking to you right now, or you're super hot, or your breasts are distracting. I don't know, whatever it is that you want to say that is announcing, I'm just joking. No, I think I've said all those. Yeah, I'm sure you're like, I know I have. No, it's just, it's just getting it out of your head and, and, and it's expressing that little bit of vulnerability but owning it and being okay with it, you can move on and get past whatever it was that may have locked you down completely and screwed up your interaction with a woman. Yeah, and I think, you know, deep down, most guys, you know, they, they, this machismo thing is kind of a, a big facade. Yeah. Um, and I really believe that. And I actually, those few people I've known who are really like that, um, who that's who they are. They suck. Yeah. 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 They're, yeah. they're also sad a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sad and very insecure. Yeah. Suck- you know, it's it's like, you know, these football players down in Miami that harassed this guy, right. Martin. Um, and you said, and you read the guy's tweets, his, his alleged... Um, uh, apology tweets and you say boy this guy is possibly the largest asshole that ever lived yeah, right. uh, but I, I think most guys simply need to listen to not be afraid to look at a woman look her in the eye and to actually care about what she's got to say um, Absolutely. It's uh, don't be so distracted. Don't be looking all around. Um, it's all inside don't be you. Worrying. All the answers are there. Stop worrying. You know. I mean. You know. Life moves on pretty darn quickly. Yeah, and that's what we were saying actually earlier too. Before you came in, was that how fast everything goes? You don't have time to worry about that stuff. You you really don't. But um, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a child actor, and uh, which really did oh, help breaking things down. And uh, somebody once asked me, and I, I worked in a, in a show that was written by Rodgers and Hammerstein on Broadway. And uh, so I got to know all these Broadway people. And somebody once, we once talking years, years later as an adult uh, with some friends who we were talking about, what's the greatest love song ever written? And I know what it is. I know what it is. Pour some sugar on me. It it (laughs) is. It is. Um, some enchanted evening because the operative line in the lyric is once you have found her never let her go now a lot of guys they'll meet somebody and they'll go boy this woman is sensational she's terrific oh my god oh I wish I could be with her except they don't dare show it they don't dare find a way to express it well you know I'll I'll take Oscar Hammerstein's advice once you have found her never let her go so what do you got to do Right. Do you Get have some to rope. be? Do you want to be an Sorry. asshole, or do you want to demonstrate you're a good guy, you're a human being, you're you're somewhat interesting? You may not be the best looking, you may not be the most successful, you might not drive the best car, you might not have the most money, um, but everybody has something about them that they do that nobody else on earth does, and you have to you you find a way to express that difference. Yeah, and most I importantly. Most importantly, find out who that other person is and find out what, what, what they care about and what makes them different. What do you, um, what, what's your technique when it is a one con, one-sided conversation where you are the one that's genuinely interested and they're really interested in just talking at you? Do you just accept that or do you try to break that? No, nah, you know what? If that's what they want to do, if they want to talk at me, um, again, something I learned from advertising, adver- messages that talk at people don't work. Right. Um, you have to have a conversation, and the conversation has to be at a meaningful level. And sometimes you just have to write it off. Um, uh, it, it's it's that old joke about guys going into a bar with you know three, four, five different lines that are sure things. Hmm. They never are. Right. They never work. Candy dropper lines. Everybody sees through it. Yeah. You know, so it's crap and. And you laugh at it, but uh, I've seen I've certainly seen women who, uh, uh, you know, just kind of get into their own shell and jabber on without saying a thing. You know, uh, you know. I guess that woman's for somebody, but that woman's not for me. Right. Well, that's actually a really good point because we uh, only have three minutes left. We were going to get into analyze this, but this is an interesting conversation. But um, there there is a point that you also have to really respect yourself because a lot of guys go into the interaction and they don't even think, do I like her? Am I interested in her? Their main goal is to impress or get her to be attracted to them, which again, l- you lose out on the connection if that's what you're focused on. But they forget to say, oh, am I actually interested in her? Is she a nice person? Does she have good values? Do Am I impressed with what she has to say? So I, th- I think what you just said is great. You have to take a step back and think, you know, what is this person really for me? Do I want to continue talking to her? And if you don't, you 
politely excuse yourself and say, it was great talking to you. I'm going to go grab a drink or go to the bathroom or whatever it is. My friends are calling me over, but very nice talking to you. I'll see you around later. You can't, you can't take yourself out of a conversation. You don't have to lock yourself in to hopefully get that attraction from somebody who obviously isn't that great. Okay. So before, because we are kind of running out of time, I do want to ask you about your book and getting things for free. So I'm curious about that, but I'm also curious how that can apply for men trying to get certain women is that yes. do you have any techniques that cross over yeah uh, actually <laughs> i think so my book is predicated on a very simple idea actually two simple ideas the first simple idea is that whatever whatever the business you know my, my book is about writing letters to businesses that have not delivered well or that have screwed up that have messed up but the odds are that you wouldn't have been doing business with that company in the first place if you didn't think highly of them right so when you write a letter you kind of um complain a little while praising a lot I always start by saying, I've been a customer for years. I love your company. I I fly your airline. I I go to your store. I buy your clothes. Whatever it may be. Tell my boyfriend makes me feel guilty. And you've disappointed me. (laughs) Right. And I don't turn it into life or death, and I never get angry. I don't believe in that. I don't think it works in life. Right. And I don't think it works in business. You don't rant. You say, here's how, and here's what I'd like you to do. This is the second part. It's pointless to write a letter and... Yeah, and just let it get off your chest. I don't see the point of that. Right. So I always say, here's what I'd like you to do for me. So if an airline messes up in a way that is really a mess up and really was under their control, I want a free ticket somewhere. I, and I've gotten free first class seats around the world. How do you distinguish between first class and just a free ticket? That's that's what I want to know. It, like what if, level is, is? No, no. Do you say if I, I want a free first, first class, class ticket? If I was in first class, oh, okay. and that's what oh, I you're up, already I want flying. A first class oh, ticket. that's true. Okay, right. Yeah. The- no, I, I don't expect. Although I don't know. The other side of it is, I made a trip two years ago uh, on the same with the same uh, travel company that I just traveled with to Vietnam, and when it was over, it was a great, great trip. And I wrote a letter to him that started out by saying, I wrote a book about how to complain, and I don't think any of your customers are going to buy my book because you ran this so well. So we get on this trip, and part of the trip involved eight days on a riverboat, small riverboat, going up the Mekong. We get on the boat, and we discover we've been given the owner's suite. Wow. And that was straightly because I wrote this letter. letter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's... um, I actually believe in writing charming letters. I think that you don't have to be a professional writer to do that. Just be human. Um, Recognize that whoever is reading the letter is more likely to react well with a spoonful of sugar. Mary Poppins was right. Right. And finally, you know, tell them, here's what I'd like you to do for me. And so nine you're times saying, out of ten, you get it. Marnie said this a million times for dating. State your intention and... And also, instead of asking, do you want to do something, say, come with me. I'm doing this. So it's kind of asking similar for to want. that. Yeah. 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 Well, it actually connects to the beginning part of our show, which is where I want to end on. Because we were talking about, or was this off air? I don't even remember. But pre- appreciating your significant other and um, how important that is. And then I like, was definitely not talking but, about Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, but that's, that's the way in a, in a relationship or even in a first interaction. It, it's, it's, a, it's about appreciating a person first and then saying, but here and here's what I want. You know, it's like you, you butter them up a little bit and then you just express your honest intention of what you want. And we are going to end the show now. I could talk to you for like hours and hours and hours, but thank you, Bruce That's Silverman, me. for being here. You wrote an amazing book called How to Complain for Fun and Profit. Make sure you check that out. Is it on Amazon? Of course it's Okay, on so go to winggirlmethod.com slash Amazon and buy Bruce's book so you can hear all about how to get shit for free. You can check out new episodes of the Ask Women podcast every Thursday on Podcast One. One.com. And you can listen to Mike Catherine Wood uh, if you are in the United States every night, right? Sunday to Thursday. Five nights a week. Five nights a week. And if you're not in the United States, go to Podcast One oh, and yeah, download the podcast. the podcast. For free with no yes. commercials. For Loveline. And then he has right. another show with Drew. There's a, there's a ton out there on Mike. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of him on The View. And I don't know. You're going to see a lot more of him. But thanks, guys, for being on the show. And we will see you next week. Thank you. This is an important announcement for anyone with a student loan who is having trouble making their monthly payments. 
If that's you, pay attention, because there's a special toll-free hotline that has been set up especially for you. So grab a pen and take this number down, or put it in your cell phone. 1-800-652-3707. That's 1-800-652-3707. When you call the National Student Loan Relief Hotline, you will get free information. That's free information to help you relieve the overwhelming financial burden of an ongoing, endless student loan. If you are behind, late on payments, or even in default of your student loan, the National Student Loan Relief Hotline can help you. You may also be able to cut your payments in half right away. The National Student Loan Relief Hotline can also stop the harassing phone calls, wage garnishments, and even remove tax liens. The National Student Loan Relief Partner Companies have helped thousands of people just like you fix their student loan problem. Call 1-800-652-3707 for free information today. That's 1-800-652-3707.